Look at some of the things that they're criticized for, being entitled. Uh, again, this is what you'll, you'll hear people say my age. You're going to hear them be call, being called narcissistic. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I'm that way a little bit. that the participation medal issue, that they job hop, the fact that they're on their smartphones all the time and they're addicted to it. There's even like a syndrome I think now called like, it's like ghost vibrating syndrome where you don't have a phone on you but you feel like you do. It's really weird. You got Dr. Fryman, you gotta add that to your diagnostics, I guess. And they're very impatient. But if you think about it, a lot of that's a result of being able to have quick access. I mean, they can Google something, which isn't always right, and pull up a journal of applied behavior analysis and have immediate access where, I remember being at West Virginia University, dust, like going through the archives to the 10th floor in Morgantown and dusting off stuff and trying to find research articles. That was kind of like my, you know, how slow it was to get information. But look, information is traveling at a very rapid pace now, so I think we have to, we have to consider that, that what's called impatient might be the fact that they can quickly access information. So when we're on the job, we have to speed up the flow of information. Just by taking what people call narcissism in, in, in the group, look at the functional equivalent, strengthen it, figure out how they can contribute to the science and get the word out, and then the, the person could be a brand ambassador for your company or for your organization or the science. So with, with YouTube, there's 1.6 million minutes watched. This is just something we started doing a couple years ago and knowing that there might not be any kind of return on investment for a while, but let's create behavior analytic content along with quality commentary and let's just see, because listen, the younger generation, they're not watching commercials. They're not gonna watch you know, CBS or NBC and then sit around for a commercial. They're gonna get on their phone. They're gonna go on a Netflix bender for House of Cards. They're gonna go, on, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna DVR it. Do people still do that? I'm getting outdated quickly. They might record it. People aren't doing that. They're not watching TV. They're gonna go on YouTube and, and quickly type in a question like, what is a functional behavior assessment? And boom, it can come up. So what we found is 1.6 million minutes watch just people kind of like millennials engaging. You don't have to go recruiting. Why? There's nothing worse than like, putting out a bunch of job ads and not hearing back. You look desperate as an There's a certain thing where if you just engage in content marketing, you will bring the people in. Just give, give value and ask for nothing in return. Just like karma. Provide value to the audience and ask for nothing in return and then people will come, hopefully. <laughs> we can take these areas that are perceived weaknesses and replace them with functional equivalents Number two, those four pillars, goal setting, self-monitoring, feedback and reinforce, and pay for performance, can also cascade through the levels to embrace all those areas of millennials. And then lastly, look, let's face it, we all want opportunities, it's not just the millennials, we wanna feel like we're growing, even in small salient steps, and we care about making meaning, not just money. And so I'll just say, could you do me a favor? What, Dr. Fryman, would you tell me a story? About what? About your work. Tell me what you did, why you did it, what you learned, and what you think that means. And tell me it in a way that your mother would understand. That way I know I will understand it and I will become a vector for your findings because now I can deliver them to the world. But if I don't know what you did, then it stops right here with me. So I go to presentations at ABAI or Babbitt or various conferences and I sit in and the presenters are presenting their research and I realize I'm not following very well what's being said here because they're not telling a story. They're overamped on the data and the design. Well, when you go buy a house, do you just look at the floor joists and the foundation? No. You make sure the floor joists and the foundation are good in shape, but that's not where people live. People live in the house. So you wanna look at the house and see where you're gonna live. And in the world, in life, people live in stories. They don't live in the data, and they don't live in the design. Now, we need to know there's data. We need to know about the design. You don't want to have that be the whole story. You want to tell them the story. The story has some, some lifeblood in it. You want to be a leader, you're going to have to tell people stories. 
And you tell me a story about your life, any story, any place in your life, and then you and I can work together and we will find a behavioral concept or principle in that story. No matter what the story is, if there's people in the story and they did stuff, then there's a behavioral concept or principle in there somewhere. So it, I'm not like suggesting that you master Calculus 3. Just tell stories about your work.